All right, welcome back to the channel. You guessed it, on today's episode, we're gonna be installing the Tesla wall connector. Right off the bat, the packaging looks very Apple-like, like Macintosh style, super clean, modern. Let's open it up and see what we got in here. Oh yeah, look at that. That thing looks like an egg from a spaceship or something, like an alien's gonna be born out of that thing. <laughs> White, which matches the Tesla. Super glass look on there, just like that ceramic coating on there. I'm gonna say it's gonna look pretty killer on this wall. All right, so let's get in here and see what's inside the box. So packaged really nicely, I have to say. All right, so we got the wall charger itself, the 18 foot cable with the charging end. Inside the charger itself, it looks like all the stuff that comes with it that's necessary for mounting it. We got the template for the wall and the quick start guide. All right, so now that we got all the parts at, let's take a look at where we want this thing. Now, my old charger was over here on the wall and I feel like that's a great spot because the cord can reach all the way in any area of the garage. I can back the car in, I can pull the car in forward. Not only that, but I can take the charging cord out into the driveway and cover an 18 foot radius because the 18 foot cord. So I feel like it's the most versatile right there. Now I do understand my pressure washer systems here. This is an outdoor rated unit and it, it is protected by a ground fault interrupt. So I'm not worried about getting shocked over here. I mean, these are in wet parking lots all around the world. So, all right, I think I found my spot. Let's get it on the wall. Keep in mind when installing that the maximum height for both indoor and outdoor is 60 inches, but the recommended height is 45 inches. Because this wall has solid studs from floor to ceiling, I'll just find the center and mark it. I'll now take the template, center it on my mark, use my level to make sure it's good and level. Once the bubble is centered perfectly, I'll be using the center holes. All right, so now we, that we have it all laid out, let's go ahead and pre-drill our holes so that the screws go in nicely. So it's completely laid out. We got the holes drilled, and now let's get the backing off of the charger. And it's pretty much time to go ahead and get this on the wall. So we'll pop the top plug out because we're gonna do a top mount or top entry for the wires. And let's go ahead and get this on the wall. So it doesn't make any mention about drilling these holes out. So I'm sure we could just run the screw right through it, but man, I got the drill right here. Let's go ahead and get these out. We know we're using the center one. Now I know they're gonna go straight through like butter and no bull crap going on. All right, we got that done. Let's get the hardware ready. And it looks like they supply a nice hex bit for our impact gun. All right, let's get this on the wall. Align the screws into the holes that you just drilled and tighten it down to the wall. All right, since there's so many ways that you can run the wiring in your place, it could be through the drywall, it could be in conduit outside the drywall or whatever wall type uh, material you have. It could be through the attic or ceiling. I chose to run mine through the attic and ceiling and down the wall with conduit. So let's talk about my thought process on that. I went with six AWG wire, which is pretty thick gauge, and I have a Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus that calls for a 40 amp circuit. So that should be fitted very nicely for that. It's about a 20 foot run from the breaker box to the actual wall connector. So with all the math done, that's a, that's a good size wire for the job. Now when you're purchasing the wire, make sure that you don't measure the exact amount and then you get onto the site, you do the full install, and then next thing you know, you're one foot short. So what I like to do is I put five to six feet extra on the breaker box side and two to three feet extra on the wall connector side to cut it off. I know it's a couple dollars a foot, but I'll tell you what, it's way better than being short. All right, so we ran the wire down through the conduit. Uh, we we entered the wall connector unit with this threaded fitting. 
we have an o-ring in between the threaded fitting and the wall connector and the reason for that i know it's inside the garage but the reason is we have the pressure washer here now no water ever comes out of it but in the unlikely event we want to make sure no water can get into this waterproof box so we have the o-ring then we have the locking nut to secure all this and then we have the insulating bushing that keeps the wire from chafing so make sure you have all the proper fittings and it all done correctly so now that we got all that done the wires in we're going to go ahead and paint this uh conduit so that it looks nice like the rest of the garage now i did put one coat of paint on it outside before i even did any of this so now we're going to come back and touch up any areas that need to be touched up paint the conduit and paint the fitting Let's go ahead and get that done. I'll be using some leftover paint from my garage remodel. It's been sitting a while, so I'll give it a good stir. It takes a few coats to fully cover this PVC, so just keep painting it until you're happy. All right, now that we got it all painted up and it looks awesome, let's go ahead and get the wires sorted out. We'll start by securing the wires with the provided zip tie. Neatly press the wires down into the provided slot. Secure the zip tie. Trim off the excess. Route each wire one at a time, marking it with your thumb, allowing a half inch to screw into the terminal block. Cut off the remainder of the wire. Using wire strippers, strip off one half inch of the insulation. Insert wire into connection block and tighten down. It calls for 50 foot pounds, but make sure it's nice and snug, but don't get too crazy. Organize the wire so that it's nice and neat. Repeat the process for the other power wire as well as the ground. And that's all there is to it. A black, a red hot wire or power wire that make up the 220 volt side, as well as a bare copper wire, which is the ground. All secured, tightened down nicely and nice and neat. There is one more wire here that I will not be using. It's a white neutral wire. I ran it anyway, just in case in the future I wanted to run any uh, items that may need a neutral. But for this application, we don't need it. So we'll just go ahead and tuck it away nice and put a wire nut on it. Now it's time to do any final organization of the wires to make them look nice and neat before we put the cover on the charger. All right, so we got the wiring all done. We got them torqued down, uh, all nice and neat in there and tidy. Remember, your job is only as good as what the next guy thinks when he opens this up. So above and beyond safety, we want neatness too. All right, so now that we got all that done, let's go ahead and get the actual wall connector up on here and mounted and secured. Next, slide the cover onto the housing. Use the four provided screws to screw down each corner of the unit. So that went together super easy, nice and secure to the wall. Now, I was limited with space here. So when I installed this, I knew I wasn't going to be able to put the, you know, the charge handle into the side like a lot of people can do when they have the amount of space. So my plan is just to wrap it around and let it hang like I did my old charger. It was more important to have it at this location than to have that side of it functioning. So let's just go ahead and start wrapping this around. It takes a few times to figure out what size loops work the best to have the handle hanging where you want it. So you'll see me here fighting with it a little bit. A oh, little smaller. And even this could be better. Each time I'll figure it out and I'll get it hanging just the way I want. And there you have it, all tidy and nice. <laughs> that thing's gonna be sick. It blows that other old one I had away, so. Pretty stoked about that. So now that it's all done, it's all laid out nicely, we're happy with it. Now we can go back outside and do the breaker side of it. All right, let's get out there and get that thing plugged in and tied in and all set up and get it fired up. 
The main power switch to the breaker box should be off before any activity takes place inside here. Use a multimeter to test to make sure that this is the case. If you're not sure what you're doing, hire a professional. As the wires enter the breaker box, they should be organized, zip-tied, and clean. The red and the black wire run to the 40 amp circuit breaker. They should be inserted and tightly fastened. The copper ground wire should also be securely fastened to the ground bus bar. After you've secured your wires and they're all nice and neat and zip tied down, put the cover to the breaker box back on and get it labeled. Now that we're confident that everything's done right, flip the circuit breaker on and you'll see the Tesla wall connector power up. Once the powering up is complete, on an iPhone go to settings, Wi-Fi, select the Tesla connector network, type in the password that is on your paperwork that came with the Tesla wall connector, join. You should see a successful joining. Now go into Safari. Type in the IP address that's listed on your paperwork. And now you'll see the configuration for the Tesla wall connector. We'll start by selecting set circuit breaker. Only qualified personnel should be doing this. Select 40 amp for my breaker. Now we'll configure the Wi-Fi. I'll select my Wi-Fi network and enter my password. It's trying to connect to my network. It actually fails during this. It won't connect to my network, so I try again. I get the same exact thing, but it does say during the process you may have to reconnect to the Tesla wall connector network to continue installation. So I decide to close it, go back to my settings, join the Tesla network again. Now when I go back to Safari, I try again. And this time it goes through. So it took me two tries and I had to go back and reconnect to the Tesla network. But check to see if there's any alerts. There's no alerts. Inside the summary, we'll see installation complete. The circuit breaker rating, mine is 40 amp. Vehicle will charge at 32 amps. And we're connected to my network, which is Chihuahua. All right, so we got everything configured and it's all looking great. Let's plug this thing in and see what it'll do. Let's press the button on the handle. Door opens. And there it is, fully functioning, working awesome. Let's hop in the car and see what kind of uh, charge rate we're getting. When I go into the car, the amperage slowly spools up and it does make it to 32 amps but the mile an hour never makes it up to the 30 plus miles an hour that I know that it will. Uh, it's because my car is almost charged to its set point. So I know when the battery is more empty, it will charge at 30 plus miles per hour. Okay, so that installation went great. It looks great too, works great. What's my final thoughts on it? Right off the bat, I have to say this, that there are some dangers associated with doing these sort of things on your own. So. I'm going to give it a rating. One being anybody can do it. Ten meaning hardly anybody but a super professional can do it. I'm going to have to give this a seven. And why? Why is because we have to work in a live breaker box. We have to know how to shut that down. We have to understand the local wiring codes. Possible permitting it is required in your area. All these things could lead to you wanting to hire a professional. I don't want anybody to mistake what I've done today for a guide that will work in every and every scenario. Do your homework. If when in doubt, hire a professional. But otherwise, I thought it went really good. The unit's well built. It's charging awesome. We love doing this kind of stuff in the garage. 
detailing, Tesla stuff, garage items, it's right up our alley. So if you like that sort of thing, we try to put videos out on a regular basis. So hit subscribe and you can join us for the next one. Ask any questions. I'll try to answer it to the best of my ability. And in the comments, other than that, we'll catch you on the next one. Yeah.